hello everyone welcome back to my youtube channel in this video i will talk about bed sores or pressure ulcer damage to an area of the skin caused by constant pressure on the area for a long time it is called pressure source or pressure ulcer this pressure can lessen blood flow to the affected area which may lead to tissue damage and tissue death look into the definition of bed sores or pressure ulcer a pressure ulcer or pressure sore or decubitus ulcer or bed sore is localized injury to the skin and other underlying tissue usually over a body prominence as a result of prolonged unrelieved pressure next move on the risk factors first is friction friction is the force of rubbing two surfaces against one another second is shear shear is a gravity force pushing down on the patient's body with resistance between the patient and the chair or bed third is impaired sensory perception next is impaired physical mobility altered level of consciousness fecal and urinary incontinence malnutrition malnutrition means poor nutrition malnutrition is a serious condition that happens when your diet does not contain the right amount of nutrients next is dehydration dehydration means loss or removal of water from your body excessive body heat advanced age and last is chronic medical conditions such as diabetes cardiovascular diseases etc next move on the layer of skin there are four layer of skin epidermis dermis hypodermis or subcutaneous tissue and last is muscle the common sites of bed sores are back of the head and ears shoulder elbow lower back and buttocks hip heel inner knees and greater trochanter next stages or classification of bed sores staging systems for pressure ulcers are based on the depth of tissue destroyed based on the depth there are four stages of bed sores stage 1 stage 2 stage 3 and stage 4 stage 1 that is non balanceable redness of intact skin intact skin presents with non balanceable arrhythmia of a localized area usually over a bony prominence discoloration of the skin warmth edema or pain may also be present stage 1 indicates at risk persons it is involves only the epidermal layer of the skin next comes to the stage 2 that is partial thickness skin loss or blister a partial thickness loss of dermis presents as a swallow open ulcer with a red pink wound bed with out slug stage 2 is damage to the epidermis and the dermis layer of the skin In this stage the ulcer may be referred to as a blister or abrasion. Next comes to the stage 3 full thickness skin loss fat visible. A stage 3 ulcer is a full thickness tissue loss. Subcutaneous fat may be visible but bone tendon or muscle is not exposed. Epidermis dermis and subcutaneous tissue involved. subcutaneous layer has a relatively poor blood supply so it's difficult to heal and last is stage 4 full thickness tissue loss a stage 4 ulcer is the deepest extending into the muscle tendon or even bone full thickness tissue loss with exposed bone tendon or muscle next comes to the complications first is cellulitis cellulitis means inflammation of subcutaneous connective tissue second is bone and joint infections third is sepsis sepsis is a serious condition resulting from the presence of harmful microorganisms in the blood or other tissues last is cancer 
कैंसर इज ए डिजीज कॉज्ड बाय एन अनकंट्रोल्ड डिवीजन ऑफ एबनॉर्मल सेल्स इन ए पार्ट ऑफ द बॉडी नेक्स्ट वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट प्रिवेंशन बेड सोर्स आर इजियर टू प्रिवेंट दैन टू ट्रीट ऑल दो उन्स कैन डेवलप इन स्पाइट ऑफ मोस्ट स्क्रेपुलस केयर इट्स पॉसिबल टू प्रिवेंट देम इन मेनी केसेस फर्स्ट इज पॉजिशन चेंजेस Changing position frequently and consistently is crucial to preventing bed sores. Experts advise shifting position about every 15 minutes that you are in a wheelchair and at least once every 2 hours even during the night if you spend most of your time in the bed. Second is skin inspection. Daily skin inspections for pressure sores are an integral part of prevention third is nutrition a healthy diet is important in preventing skin breakdown and in aiding wound healing adequate hydration to maintain the skin integrity fourth is lifestyle changes quitting smoking and exercise daily exercise improves circulation last is use pressure relieving devices such as air mattress water mattress etc next comes to the treatment changing positions often carefully follow the schedule for turning and repositioning approximately every 15 minutes if in a wheelchair and at least once every 2 hours when in bed if unable to change position on own a family member or other caregiver must be able to help Second is using support surfaces. These are special cushions, pads, mattresses and beds that relieve pressure on an existing sore and help protect vulnerable areas from further breakdown. Third is cleaning. It's essential to keep wounds clean to prevent infection. A stage 1 wound can be gently washed with water and mild soap. but open sores should be cleaned with a salt water saline solution each time and dressing is changed fourth is controlling incontinence next is removal of damaged tissue to heal properly wounds need to be free of damage dead or infected tissue next is dressings oral antibiotics healthy diet and last is educating the caregiver surgical repair tissue flap plastic surgery may be required to replace the tissue other treatment options researchers are searching for more effective bed sore treatments under investigation are hyperbaric oxygen and the topical use of human growth factors this comes to the role of nurse in prevention and management of bed sores the nurse should be continuously assessing the client who are at risk for pressure ulcer development assess the client for the predisposing factors for bed sore development skin condition at least twice a day inspect each pressure sites palpate the skin for increased warmth inspect for dry skin moist skin breaks in skin evaluate level of mobility evaluate circulatory status example peripheral pulses edema assess neurovascular status determine presence of incontinence evaluate nutritional and hydration status note present health problems interventions for a patient with decreased sensory perception assess pressure points for signs of bed sore development provide pressure redistribution surface next is interventions for a patient with incontinence assess need for incontinence management follow each incontinent episode clean area and dry thoroughly protect skin with moisture barrier ointment third is interventions to avoid friction and shear repositioning patient using draw sheet and lifting of surface use proper positioning technique 
Avoid dragging the patient in bed. Use comfort devices appropriately. Next thing is interventions for a patient with decreased activity or mobility. Establish individualized turning schedule. Change position at least once in two hours and more frequently for the high risk individuals. Interventions for a patient with poor nutrition. Provide adequate nutritional and fluid intake. Assist with intake as necessary. And last is consult dietitian for nutritional evaluation. It is all about pressure ulcer.